so now we are here with the uh, clinical exam and the uh, the important the important point uh, of the clinical exam of the patient with aortic stenosis as we have discussed that the pathophysiology and all these things and the causes and the etiology of the aortic stenosis now the patient is in your clinic so and uh, what few things you have to look for in the patient of aortic stenosis and then you have to diagnose your patient that your patient has aortic stenosis and the which type of the aortic stenosis that is because you know that there are the various type of the aortic stenosis it could be subvalvular it could be supravalvular it could be uh, alveoli obstruction it could be valvular so number one obviously you have to look for the signs the peripheral signs you have you have to check the blood pressure of your patient and in the blood pressure you will get the there will be the narrow pulse pressure and it is also a sign of severity in the patient of the uh, uh, aortic stenosis and the pulse of your the pulse which you will check your patient that would be the low volumic and the low volumic pulse again is a sign of the severity of aortic stenosis and obviously you move towards the whole uh, like uh, facial examination you have to look for the signs of anemia and all these things and you will after auscultate after auscultation for the carotid you you have to check the carotid pulse because carotid pulse is the best perif the the best uh, surrogate of the central pulsation of a person if you have to look for the central pulsation you have to check the uh, carotid pulse if you have to check the peripheral pulsation of the patient then the radial and all the other other pulse are pulses are the good pulses to check or it, the, these are the good surrogate for the per peripheral, per uh, peripheral circulation so in the carotid you will get the powers retarded Parvus retardus pulse. What is parvus retardus? It is actually slow rising pulse. The first it will be a low rising pulse, and then it, there would be a major stroke in the pulse. So that pulse would be the slow rising pulse, and then there would be the drop. There would be the slow rising pulse, and then there would be the drop. Then there, uh, like the first stroke and the second stroke. So that pulse would be the slow rising. We we called it the parvus retardus pulse and it is also a clinical feature of the patient with the aortic stenosis so after all doing all these things obviously you will you will examine the precordium you in the precordium you have to look for the inspection and you will look for the visible pulsations after visible pulsations you will check the apex speed the apex speed would be usually not displaced if the patient if the ejection friction of the patient is uh, like uh, normal and if uh, and if this uh, patient has not mixed aortic disease, uh, valvular disease such as if this patient has not ar so most of the time your patient would have the undisplaced apex speed and that apex speed would be heaving in character that would be force, forceful and sustained the, it, it uh, because it yes sometimes uh, it it may be visible on the precordium sometimes it would not be so it, it, it depends and it varies person to person but that usually it would be undisplaced and heaving in character number uh, the two which is the important thing is that you have to comment after all, doing all these things you have to comment over the the uh, heart sounds the normal heart sounds well, how how is the first heart sound how is the second heart sound how is the component of the second heart sound so the first heart sound is usually normal if you're if your patient has no atrial fibrillation if your patient is in the sinus rhythm the first heart sound would be the normal but if your patient has a atrial fibrillation it would be variable in intensity but uh, and after the s1 then you have to look for the obviously the aortic component and the pulmonary component usually aortic component is soft in the aortic stenosis and there uh, would not be P2 loud until and unless there would be the massive pulmonary hypertension in your patients and there would be no RV heave. Yes, you may get the thrill at the aortic area in the patients who would have the uh, grade 5 murmur or grade 4 murmur. So uh, you can get all these things in the patient of aortic stenosis. Then after commenting over the uh, S1 and the S2, you have to tell the, uh, the, 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 the characteristic of murmur to your examiner and the, there would be the ejection systolic murmur. That murmur would be like something ejecting from the stenotic, stenotic area like like that type of the murmur you will get on the auscultation obviously uh, as it is a systolic murmur it would be louder than, than the other murmurs. So you will usually you will get this at this at the at the uh, right parasternal 
right upper sternal border at the A2 area. But uh, yes, if you are getting that the same murmur at the A1 area or the upper right, uh, upper left sternal border, parasternal border, it means that this person has a bicuspid aortic valve because the murmur, the A secondary to aortic is bicuspid. Uh, uh, well, uh, usually have the murmur at the left parasternal border. The which the the important thing, which the important clue, which uh, which will give you uh, a, a clue that your patient has the bicuspid aortic valve is the age of patient. If your patient is presenting to you with the age of seventy or seventy five years, having the ejection systolic murmur and that murmur is at the A2 area then obviously that would be most of the time valvular stenosis but if the patient is coming to you in the young age like the 50 years or the 55 years having the ejection systolic murmur then that could be the bicuspid area. The major important thing is the radiation to the carotids. The radiation to the carotids. Most of the time this aortic murmur are uh, radiates through the carotid. These are the pathological murmurs. But the murmur which is has here at the aortic area which is not radiating to the carotids are usually the flow murmurs in AR and the flow murmurs in the prosthetic valve and these are could be the a murmur of aortic sclerosis. The aortic sclerosis is the process of the sclerosis, the process in the elderly males which usually have these sort of murmurs but those patients would not have gradients, those patients would not have like the velocity across the increased velocity across the uh, aortic valve and on examination these murmurs would will not or usually do not radiate towards the carotid. So you so it is a good sign uh, to tell you that this patient would have probably the aortic sclerosis. If the patient is elderly like 80 years having the, having the ejection systolic murmur and it is not radiating to the carotids, you can safely say that this, uh, this murmur could be aortic sclerosis and usually those patients will not have the symptoms of aortic stenosis because these are not the pathological murmurs. Okay, so uh, uh, this is how you differentiate the person to uh, li like like uh, the aortic stenosis, the, the patient of aortic stenosis, patient to patient. Like you can easily categorize your patient in uh, according to, uh, with your examination that where your patient lies. Uh, after taking history and all these things, obviously exam is the most important part of, is of the of the clinical examination or the clinical presentation of the patient, usually in the ER or the, or or in the clinics. So after doing all these things, obviously now you have to differentiate on auscultation that your patient has a supravalvular, valvular or subvalvular stenosis. Then you have to do some maneuvers. First of all, you have to keep one thing in your mind that all the left-sided murmurs like the murmur of the mitral valve, murmur of the aortic valve would increase on expiration, would increase on expiration, okay? And all the right-sided murmurs are decrease on inspiration, but only one thing, only one sound of the right side would increase on inspiration that is, oh sorry, decrease, uh, increase on expiration that is the pulmonary click ejection click of the pulmonary stenosis that increases on expiration uh, a rest of the murmur increases uh, of the right sided increases on uh, in, in, inspiration. So the, the important thing which I, again I want to uh, come to our uh, uh, come back to our uh, topic is that how we will differentiate our patient with the supravalvular, valvular or subvalvular stenosis. So you have to do the expiration obviously you will get the all the murmurs the of the of the uh, left side would be increased now you have to do the well salva uh, maneuver if the on the well salva if the if the murmur is decreases it could be supravalvular valvular or subvalvular but not hcm because on well salva hcm murmurs increases and on squirting hcm murmur decreases why because the venous because of the flow across the aortic valve whenever there would be the flow across the lvot increases hcm murmur decreases when there would be the decrease flow across the LVOT, there would be increased murmur of HCM and decreased murmur of the valvular and the supra or the subvalvular. Uh, we have discussed all these things in our previous lectures. You can uh, go and listen to the HCM uh, lectures and you will get all the answers of these maneuvers with the HCM versus A's. 
Now come to the point, the volume after PVC. Uh, the, 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 the volume after PVC of the pulse would be increases on supravalvular, valvular or subvalvular but decreases with the HCM. Post PVC the volume of the pulse would be decreased in the HCM and in AR there would be in uh, the, 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 the aortic regurgitation is very common with the supravalvular AS and subvalvular AS but not HCM and well salva why i have written this hcm and other causes of subvalvular together because hcm is also a subvalvular stenosis it is subvalvular stenosis because it is there is a apical hypertrophy which causes the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which i have discussed in the lecture of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy now come to the keratic pulse which is very 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 important to differentiate the supravalvular as and the uh, subvalvular as or the valvular as in the supravalvular as there would be the keratic pulses would be unequal why because there would be a stenosis at the supravalvular uh, region so it causes the decreased pulses in one carotid and increased pulse or the normal pulse in the and other carotid so there would be the differentiating and that would be the most differentiating point on the examination how, uh, by which you can differentiate or categorize your patient into supravalvular valvular subvalvular or you can do you can also differentiate your patient with the aortic stenosis with the hcm because usually most of the time HCM patient would be younger and the aortic stenosis patient will not be younger. That is another clue which you, which will, uh, uh, which will indicate that your patient has all these things. You have to look the patient as whole, but your patient could be bicuspid aortic valve stenosis from which you have to differentiate that your patient has HCM or not. Then obviously you will do squatting. You have to do the valsalva maneuvers. If the murmur is increasing with the HCM, with the Valsalva maneuvers, then obviously that is HCM. Oh, sorry, that is uh, increases on Valsalva, it is HCM. And if it is decreasing on squatting, again, it, it will confirm you that this is HCM. Why? Because when you squat the patient, the flow across the aortic valve increases and it causes louder murmur in the valvular stenosis. But with HCM as the uh, due to increase flow across the LVOT, the, there would be less uh, LVOT uh, obstruction and there would be the less murmur if it, HCM with squirting. So if a murmur decreases on squirting, increases on a well salva, it would be confirmed that your person, person is HCM. But it is vice versa, then you will obviously, you will confirm that your patient has what? Your patient has aortic stenosis so obviously further after doing all these things you have to look for the chest x-ray of your patient ECG of the patient and then we will jump towards the advanced thoracic echocardiography to confirm our findings in this lecture we will discuss only chest x-ray in the ECG and in the lex in the, in the in the next lecture we will discuss whole uh, echocardiographic findings the trans thoracic the tra transesophageal and the indication of transesophageal in the aortic stenosis and the dobutaminestrase stress echo, the role of the dobutaminestrase stress echo in the uh, diagnosis of aortic stenosis patients. Here, the chest x ray, what you uh, will have the, the, the cardiothoracic ratio would be normal, it could be enlarged, it could be normal, but usually there would be the signs of LA enlargement if your patient has the LV hypertrophy and the pulmonary vessels would be engorged if there would be the patient patient as a signs of heart failure. Usually the patient would have the normal chest x-ray and the CT ratio would not be enclosed. It could be the signs of LA enlargement, the pulmonary vessels or the battling appearance in the patients who would have the increased pulmonary capillary wage pressure or increased LVDP. And on ECG, obviously, as you know that their LA enlargement would be there secondly to diastolic dysfunction. There would be LV hypertrophy, as we discussed already here. That the, and the wall and the, the L, and the criteria of the LV hypertrophy would be fulfilled. You should know the Sokolo criteria. You should know the uh, the uh, uh, the coronal criteria of LVH. You should know the modified coronal criteria. You should know the wrong health. These are the four criteria which. Have, which uh, every a, a good doctor should uh, uh, keep in their mind to diagnose the patient of LVH on the ECG and the atrial fibrillation in, in some time when there will be 
the when they would the massive enlargement second due to the LVH LV L, LV hypertrophy and your patient usually have the atrial fibrillation. So these are the clinical exam of your patient which you could have and this is very important for the uh, for your short cases in especially in the Pakistan for your call for the exact exam of uh, College of Physician and Surgeons Pakistan. So I think I have uh, made myself clear about the clinical exam of uh, aortic stenosis. Inshallah, in, like in next lecture we will do the 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 whole lecture on the echocardiographic findings and uh, when to do the echocardiography. What we will get the echocardiography. What are the severity? Uh, 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 what are the severity parameters of echo echo uh, cardiography and how we will follow our patient with the echocardiography if they would have the moderate or mild disease. Allah is take care. Always subscribe. Always watch my uh, lectures. Share my lectures with your friends who needs. Uh, who need support in the cardiology because I think I'm making myself more clear towards the cardiology and these lectures will be really beneficial for you guys and your friends. Number one, number two, and please subscribe my channel, share my channel with your colleagues, your peers and your friends and press the bell button for the future updates. Allah Hafiz.